Welcome to the Dental Implant Practices Podcast, where each episode will explore how to integrate dental implants into your practice and into bone with your host, Dr. Philip Gordon. Welcome back to another episode of the Dental Implant Practices Podcast. I'm your host, Philip Gordon. And uh, today, it's a huge honor for me to introduce Adrian Hernandez. Adrian, thanks for being on the show with me. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for giving us this opportunity. Yes, and uh, Adrian, you are the CEO of Pick Dental Imaging System for Full Arch Dentistry. Uh, why don't you tell me a little bit about how you kind of got into the dental field and, and a little bit of background on uh, Pick Dental and how it came to, how it came to be? Yeah, sure. Uh, so Pick Dental means precise implants capture. And uh, I, I am not a dentist, uh, neither a dental technician. I am a, an industrial engineer. And I was uh, doing, in my last years, I was doing the same. I was trying to do a digital industrial CAD CAM market. I was working for a company which is called Delta CAD. And uh, I was uh, responsible of the reverse engineering market uh, department. And um, I was dealing with uh, quality control machines, uh, quality control software, reverse engineering software, and of course, 3D scanners. In those markets, like the eolic power or the nuclear power, you have to deal with big, big volume, big, big um, objects. And you have to scan them, and you have to do the reverse engineering of those uh, shapes. Um, and it's not easy to achieve a high accuracy uh, 3D object file uh, um, with a 3D scanner. So we used to combine a lot of software, different devices like photogrammetry, 3D scanner, laser tracker, uh, everything together with the mindset that everything cannot be manufactured. So when you are trying to design something, uh, is it going to be doable? Is it going to be easy to manufacture, expensive, cheap? How many resources we have to spend to make it happen? All these questions um, are the, the, the very first principles when you are going to scan for reverse engineering, whatever uh, object uh, you are involved in. So uh, f- for those of people who maybe don't know as much about uh, the PIC dental device, um, it's an extra oral scanner as opposed to an intra oral scanner. Um, and so people may not know what that is. You know, I think, you know, a lot of dentists are maybe familiar with intra oral scanning now. Um, but what's the difference between extra oral scanning and intra oral? And what's this photogametry stuff that I think uh, maybe some people know about, but, but it's, it's definitely, they're, they're two different processes and how, how are they different and, and why, is, why is this maybe a, a good thing in dentistry? Well, basically, there is a big, big difference because it is not even a scanner. So PIC Dental System is composed by two mainly products, which is the PIC Camera and the PIC Transfers. The PIC Transfers are um, coded uh, 3D coded transfers. So we have abutments that are screw retained. You will screw on the implants um, those transfers, and the camera will get some pictures extra orally. Uh, will get some pictures uh, like 30 centimeters far away from the transfers, um, and the system is not scanning. And this is the biggest um, key point that we can. Um, advertise here. The PIC camera, it's a measuring device. We are measuring the coded targets. And these measurements are dynamic or static. We can set up the system to do both. So do you see the systems like um, videogrammetry, like uh, all this uh, uh, black dress that uh, the people is wearing for the gaming? with the spheres in the elbows, in all the joints, like to, to record by video the real movements of the big players, of the real players. This is called videogrammetry. So this is mostly for a tracking system for, to try to make the correspondation, the exactly movements of the, these spheres. What we do is measure. 
we measure in a very high accurate with an optical device. It's probably the most accurate technology for optical measurements. And this is very important to uh, make the difference with the scanners. One scanner is giving to you a 3D point of cloud, okay? Uh, a point cloud, uh, a cloud of points. So you have a lot of points, and then one software uh, makes some edge between those points. So every three points, you have a triangle, and this triangle becomes a polygon uh, file. And this is a, a standard tessellation language file, an STL file, okay? The, what we do is directly obtaining the vector director of each point. So we will, as we have measured previously and calibrate those codes, we have like calibration panels. Each peak transfer is a calibration panel. So when, once the camera is starting getting the pictures, it's just measuring between one calibration panel to the other calibration panel. So the final result, it's an STL file that contains all the implant positions in vector director. To those vector directors, you can place the implants, the scan bodies, the tie bases, whatever 3D object you want to place in. But the most important thing of Peak Dental is that this file is a block, it's unalterable. Nobody can change the um, positions interrelated between the implants. The angles and the distances that the camera took in the patient mouth are unalterable. Nobody can change them. It's like a block. When you send from the patient implants through the milling machine, in between you have steps. You have to combine with the soft tissue. You have to design. You have to place it in an intermaxillar relation. You have a lot of steps in between, which are most of, most of them taken in the lab. Nobody can change in the lab or in the clinic those interrelated positions. So the, the pig file will be fixed from the patient mouth to the milling machine. And this is the most important uh, feature. You know, I've got one of your brochures and it talks about kind of the process. Um, you know, there's, there's maybe like five steps that it highlights. And, you know, the first one is placing the pick abutments. Uh, the second one is the pick camera capture. Uh, where you're capturing the image. Um, the third is the you know implant positions, uh, like you said, are interrelated and, and captured. The fourth is a soft tissue uh, STL file. And then the fifth is you align the implants and soft tissue and you have your kind of final file there. Um, you know, these pick abutments kind of look like uh, little flags with these little dominoes on them um, for people that maybe haven't seen them. Do those screw right into the implants or do those go onto like a multi-unit or what? what is their connection? Yeah, the, we have different platforms. We have 2,700 different geometric platforms to create those peak transfers custom made for every customer. So every, for example, if you have a, a one brand which has internal connection, external connection, and you have three different uh, mm, mm, three different platforms, uh, three different diameters. You have, for example, regular, narrow, and wide platform, internal and external. So you will have six different geometries. And in addition to this, you have a transepithelial abutment. And this transepithelial abutment, uh, you can have a seventh geometry. So we will manufacture, if you use all of them, we will manufacture the seven different geometries custom for this implant brand, okay, in particular. But the most common geometry is the multi-unit uh, transepithelial abutment. It's like uh, the concept of all on four and all on six, all those concepts are based in a multi-unit um, abutment. So we used to manufacture like 60% uh, of our cases to multi-unit and maybe 30% to other different uh, transepithelial apartments. And uh, just the 10% rest directly to the implant. Nobody nowadays wants to restore their full arch uh, restorations directly to the implant platform. It's very rare. This is something from the past, something that maybe 
uh, 10 years ago when we started with uh, this system maybe they 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 used to ask me hey Adrian, i have these very old implants can you please uh come here because we don't have transfers the, we cannot find the, the 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 distributor of these old implants can you come here and we can and we used to do that for them like a favor um but today nowadays it's very rare and everybody don't use transepidial elevators to have a better insertion axis of the full arch to have a more uh, accessible um, screw retain restoration over the gingiva, not deep, uh, close to the bone. It's like, you know, the switch, the platform switching, it changed a little bit, a little bit the, the implant processes uh, world. So platform switching and multi-unit abutments helps a lot to everybody to gain biological space to facilitate the insertion of the prosthesis. It's like, uh, it's much more uh, easy to work with. And even with this, they have, they find problems while while taking the, the regular impressions. And that's why uh, those customers or those premium clinics that they are focused in, in, in high implants volume, in a lot of full arts in, in their practices, they call us and say, hey, Adrian, I am trying to be digital. We want to become a digital uh, clinic. And um, we are doing all good. The single units are good. The veneers, we are working with the intro scanners. Everything is good. Everything is smooth. But the full arch impression is still very, very challenging. So in this moment, is well, we say, okay, here we are for help. So that's what we do. We are mostly uh, pe- working for people that he- they want to be a digital, a full digital clinic, and they are struggling with the full arch, uh, with the internal scanning, and uh, they they call us or just people. Uh, sometimes they call us like, "Hey, my neighbor has this uh, pigmental system. I want to know what it is." So it's uh, mouth by mouth or people which is really uh, challenging the full arch uh, workflow. And this is what we do. Sure. Absolutely. Now, now once they get the impression uh, or the, the picture and the soft tissue, um, what type of software does this merge with? Does it merge with like ExoCAD or all the, the big um, software so that, you know, um, any, any lab can kind of work with these files or, or what limitations are there for, um, file transfer yeah, and or manipulation. Basically, basically uh, the three, uh, the two biggest ones, which is uh, Three Shape and ExoCAD, they uh, are able to import the big file to import the soft tissue STL file. And once you import both, you uh, have inside the, the, their own software. You don't need an additional software. They have their own tools to uh, correlate both pig file with the implant positions and soft tissue. You can correlate it and continue with your exocad or uh, dental designer uh, workflow. So this is really a very easy step. It's not like uh, when we started in the past, um, TreeShape was very close, exocad uh, even uh, don't have a, a, a real implants module. So when we started in 2010, we had to support our customers um, with a service that we still keep that service uh, for for many of of our customers that they want us to to create the the model, they want us to create the design, and we keep just a few customers, very very old fashioned ones. But today, nowadays, with uh, the, all the dental wings, and the, the only one which is still the only the only one which is still close, and we don't have access to it, is um, it's uh, Sh- Shirona Densply. So it's the only software that we cannot do because dental wings uh, DTX from Nobel BioCare, which is based on Exocad, Exocad and Three Shape. All, all the big ones uh, we are able to work with. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. I think so. That really opens up the uh, 
you know, ease of workflows and all that. Sorry, sorry to, in, to interrupt. Um, it's very important what you say now. It's all about workflows. When we start, I don't know if you know the history of this, of Peak Dental. Uh, Peak Dental starts because of um, a real problem. Uh, my father, uh, 12 years ago now, 12 years ago, uh, no, in 2007, the, his dentist uh, placed on him seven implants in the upper maxilla. And in 2008, uh, one year later in November, um, the implant prosthesis was broken. They have a fracture in between the canine and the premolar. So it was a metal ceramic uh, framework, a full arch on seven implants. And uh, I was working for another field. I, I, I wasn't in the dental market. And then I talked to my father. Hey, daddy, uh, do you want me to try to help? Oh, yes, please. Join me. We will go to the dentist and figure, figure out what is going on with this prosthesis. It was broken one year later. I said, okay. So we went to the dentist and we were talking to him. And the dentist explained to us that maybe uh, the forces and the, uh, the fitting of the prosthesis on the implants is not exactly, because taking an impression of seven implants is complex. So we had no idea what he was talking about. We also went to the, to the dental lab, and I was trying to talk to the dental lab to understand if he's not using 3D scanners, because, you know, I was doing kind of stuff. So... Uh, I, I tried to convince the, the lab, the dental technician, to, 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 to work more digital. And he explained me that the problem is not in the digital from the lab. It wasn't because he, he, he explained to me that the fitting over the model was perfect, but the model wasn't exactly to the implant's mouth. So this gives me an opportunity to say, okay, so if I can give you the exact positions of the, of the implants of my father, I will be able to send this file to a, to a CNC five axis machine, and then we will have a, a perfect fitting. And he said, yeah, basically, this is what we need, a, a position of the implant. So I, I talked to my boss, and I say, it's a German guy, Alejandro Arjona, nor and uh, I talked to him and I say, Alex, uh, look, my father has uh, this problem. Uh, what can we do? I want to help him. Why we don't develop uh, some um, device to help him? He told me, now it's crazy. Now the crisis is coming, 2008. Um, now everything will be go down. We have to stay in another mood and say, okay. But my father has still a problem in the mouth. Okay, do it your own. So two months later, I quit the company and I start my own. And uh, that's how I started in the dental market, uh, just to help my father to have something better. And 11 years later, I'm here living because of this. We, we have uh, systems, big uh, dental units in, in all around the world. And the most important thing that is because I interrupt you is that we had the necessity in 2010 when we launched the system, we had the necessity to have a workflow, a digital workflow, a real one. So we started using the CT scanners as 3D scanners. We used to use plastic tray with alginate. We place those alginate with plastic trays in the CT scanner. From this DICOM file, we convert it to an STL file 10 years ago. With these soft tissues, we merge with the PIG file. Also, we start taking the intermaxillary relation with the gypsum models also in the CT scanners. Then we go to, to other scanners from the laboratory. So depending on what we found, what kind of um, labs we found more or less digital, we were forced to use 100% digital workflow depending on what we found in the labs and in the clinics. You know, in 10 years ago, 
it's, it was very rare to find an intraoral scanner in a clinic. Today, it's very easy. Today, you go to a clinic and they have at least two intraoral scanners and also a CT scanner. So with this, you can really go fully digital um, in, in 99% of the, of the cases. But in um, 10 years ago, uh, it was so difficult. So we have to purchase. I remember the first, the first 3D printer that I purchased, it was $85,000. Uh, it was like 70,000 euros. I purchased this 3D printer because I need, I have the necessity to manufacture the 3D models for, for the labs. So I was working uh, for the clinics, but I had the compromise to build the 3D model for the clinics and send it to the labs in order that they are able to put it in the articulator, to do the wax up and everything. So we create a full digital workflow but the labs still were working in a conventional workflow. Can you imagine that? Sure. No, I, and, and I think that's where, um, you know, the technology uh, has really caught up to the, the demand because, you know, like you said, um, anybody who's really got it um, is staying at the front of technology has an intraoral scanner and a 3D printer and a CBCT machine. So this might be kind of like the missing link, right? So, uh -huh. so how, how does this system... Um, increase the efficiency and the workflow. So um, as opposed to taking impressions and models and all that, you can, di you can fully digitize. Does it help with inner arch relationship or does that still have to happen another way and or um, the, the digital process? You said most of these can be 100% um, digital nowadays. Uh, uh, how is that process going? Is that, is that a, a realistic opportunity for most uh, people? Yeah, yeah, hundred um, percent. When we were uh, when we were starting with this, we have uh, found a lot of barriers. Uh, main, mostly uh, trust barriers. Don't uh, don't believe in a full digital workflow. They don't believe in zirconia. They don't believe in modelless workflows. They don't believe in three D printers accuracy. They don't believe in um, the reproducibility of the milling machines. So this is what we found 10 years ago. But because of the evolution, how all these technologies rapidly were, um, and they came to stay, they will not, uh, they will not go anywhere. And uh, rapidly, they, they, they were implemented in the labs. And now everybody can understand that if you design in a software and you do the cutback of the buccal side, premolar to premolar of one millimeter, the reproducibility of the milling machine will give you exactly one millimeter depth to uh, create the space for the pink to uh, reproduce the false uh, gingiva. So nowadays, working without models it's not a possibility. It's something that 90% of my customers are doing all over the world. It's not an exclusive thing for Europeans or for Australians. Uh, no, everybody, if you purchase a system um, here in, in the US or in Australia, we will teach you how to implement this workflow in a very efficient manner. No matter which, no matter, and this is very important, which are your habits. You can have the habit of taking impressions with alginate. You can have the habit of scallop dentures, and uh, you want to uh, create more bone and create more gingiva, or you have the habit to say, no, 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 we, I do totally the opposite. I will do in, uh, reducing of bone, we will do a flat gingiva, and we will create a pink in the final prosthesis in order to, to, to avoid problems with uh, implantitis or whatever you want. So no matter which workflow it's today in the Dupla clinic and lab, and this is very important, every clinic and lab, this Dupla has their own workflows. If you have a clinic and you are working with two different labs, then you have two different workflows. You create one workflow with one lab and one workflow to another lab. 
If you go to a lab that they have 10 different clinics, they have 10 different workflows with the data because people, it's really leading their practices and they want a very specific way of doing the things. So what we do is we jump in or jump out in your workflow just to adjust what is really a bottleneck. So we try to find the bottleneck of your workflow. We jump in, jump, jump out, and we call it pick pro. What means pro? Pro means proprietary prosthesis protocols. So depending on how digital uh, is your experience, we uh, offer from two days training till five days training. Of course, two days training is a must. It's, there is no, we, we don't just deliver devices. We, we, we never ever de deliver one device and uh, we sell the system and we send you the device and say, okay, go. No, at least two days of training to see how are your workflows and try to, to improve it. And maximum five days to improve not also your workflow, also the skills of your lab. Uh, how are they doing the milling? How are they positioning the models on the 3D printer? Which implant leverage are they using? Which tie bases uh, are they using? Why? How are they cementing those tie bases? There is a lot of uh, small details to achieve the perfection. And um, it's not easy to deal with masters that they are doing a lot of uh, have customers that they are doing 250 full arches per month, uh, sorry, per year. So we are, we are talking about people that have a lot of uh, experience and knowledge about what they are doing. So it's not easy to change this, um, um, this uh, work because, because they are making money of it and they have um, a machine which is rolling and you cannot stop that machine to, uh, to force them to follow your workflow. So you have to be flexible enough to jump in and jump out and just help them when they really need it. And this is what we do with the, with the workflows. This is very, very important for us, the training, the experience that we have. And because we were forced to do it, to make it happen, it's not that we jump today when you have a lot of different 3D printers, cheap, uh, better ones, another one, uh, everyone has a, it's like a, the, the, new, the new conversation in the, in the clubs are about 3D printers. Oh, well, which 3D printers do you have? Oh, I have this one and this one. I just bought this one. <laughs> 10 years ago, there were no 3D printers uh, in, the, in, the, in the labs or in the, in the clinics. And we have to really find the solution. And this is what we did in the past. And today is much more easier. But this experience is accumulated and it's far away our, one of our best uh, points, how we can help our customers. Yeah, that's great. So, so you um, you give training, you help the uh, the dentist and or the labs, uh, you know, the support they need to find the workflow that best fits them. Um, it sounds like there's lots of ways to um, to get these going. Uh, so, if if somebody was looking at this system, what would be the biggest advantage, in your opinion, to say um, switching to this system makes sense? based on these advantages and, and would there be a reason, is there a certain like volume that people should be doing to, to see a return on this? Cause obviously there's um, an investment piece getting into it. You know, how many, um, what did, what, what are the main advantages for people to say, yes, this is, you know, we're doing a lot of implant cases. This is the time to do it because um, this reason, obviously, um, you know, we want to do our best work, but it has to kind of make sense for everybody. So what, you know what's what's the big reason for jumping in on this, and 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 when should a when should an implant dentist or uh, or clinic look at this as far as a, a volume standpoint? Yeah, basically the most important thing is I have the control. When you start with Peak Dental, you own the control of the implant impression, and this is by far the most important key point of the system. When you have the control, and you know that the file that you have is exactly the position of the patient's implants and uh, that you can send to uh, one lab or another lab and the result will be exactly the same, the reproducibility 
the reliability, those things are related to quality. And it's not easy to sell quality because it's not something that you can tell to the, to the patient because the patient has no idea. The patient is expecting that this is not a problem. So when, when a patient comes and say, um, and you tell him, hey, look, we have this thick dental, so we will have a perfect uh, impression today. And uh, they will say, so the impression that you did to my wife two years ago was not perfect? You know? So it's something you cannot really explain to them, but it's something that is business to business, and uh, you can really tell to the system, to the to the doctor, exactly the opposite. Hey, do you remember when this wife's man came and you have to repeat the impression two times because it doesn't fit, and at the end you feel this in the screws when you were tightening it? This will not happen anymore. Why? Because you have the control. The system has some alerts that if you don't do it right, the system don't allow you to continue with impression. Once everything is perfect, the system allows you to export the STL file. And this is very powerful, okay? This is one point. And the other point far away uh, was the original idea of splitting the impression in two steps. When you are able to understand, it's not my phrase, it's from Julius Caesar, divide and conquer. When you divide the impression in two steps, you go to um, soft tissue registration. You can ask to 30 doctors, and maybe you will find 30 different answers. Which is the best impression material for soft tissue? And you will find, oh, impregum, oh, polyvinyl, oh, polyether, oh, alginate, oh, my ichiro, oh, synchronic paste, oh, uh, real gypsum. You know, so there is no really a consent that everybody say, no, this is the best for soft tissue registration. So most of the clinics try their best with one technology. Could be polyvinyl, could be alginate, but it's good enough because they have the experience that all the dentors adapt perfectly for years and years. So they know how to manage with this. And when the, the brand or the, or the dental deposit, they change, they change the one of the products. Hey, hey, why don't you have no any more this alginate? It was fantastic. Oh, come on. It's a very old one. Uh, yeah, but it was fantastic because they are used to it and they don't want a new one. Okay. Or uh, the internal scanners that everybody is very happy uh, when they purchase the technology. You know, so a splitting impression in two steps make much more easy to take just the soft tissue because think about when you are taking an implant impression, no matter if it's two units or six units, you are trying to do exactly the same. You are trying to get the implant positions in the same step that you are trying to get the soft tissue registration. So the transfers and the wires and the splinting material, it's a problem when you are trying to get the soft tissue and the material that Mm, mm, reproduce the soft tissue, it's a problem because it has a contraction. Um, it's um, a problem for the implant position. So we say, hey, if no matter if you are using internal scanners or conventional impressions, the problem is that taking the two steps in the, the, the two, uh, the two things in the same step is a problem. Let's divide it. Let's take the implant, the implant impression into a step. In one step, we will have the implant positions, easy. Let's find the most accurate technology. We found many. We found laser tracking. We found infra, infrasound uh, technology. We found photogrammetry. We found many, uh, many uh, possible technologies. And let's find a way to register the soft tissues with the best technology that you can achieve in the in the clinic. So that was from the very first um, starting point, something that we have very clearly made that 
even if it seems to be more complex because it's two steps instead of one and more long procedures, at the end of the day, when you have a big volume, take it, take in an implant impression. Um, just doing big files in one room and doing soft tissue registrations in another room, or if you want people uh, rolling around the, the chairs, doing different things, is specializing the people in doing the right thing. We, find, uh, we notice that you are much more efficient if you create a very easy way to reproduce the soft tissues and a very easy way to take the implant positions. And then we send it to the lab, and in the lab, they put it together in a simple three clicks. And this was the game changer, I think. This was the game changer. Because, um, because for example, we, I remember a customer in Australia, Dr. Alex Vivisenko, he uh, bit me and said, Adrian, if you come here and you can restore all my cases that I can put for you, I bet you that you, I will buy the system. I said, okay. So I went there to Melbourne, Australia, and he places uh, 18 patients, one eight, 18 patients uh, in, in one week. And the Thursday, the four working day, we were done. We were done. Everything was set up. All the models were created in 3D. And I sent those models to the, um, to the lab and I said, okay, we're done. And he was like, wow. So we did, in between these, uh, five of those cases were immediate loading. So we did 13 regular cases and five uh, immediate loading cases, full arts, all of them. And he was really amazed. Or, for example, Dr. Michael Picos from Tampa, Florida. Dr. Michael Picos, uh, he asked me to test the system. We went there. We take an impression of one of the of the of the patients, and three in the afternoon. I have no much time to deliver in the same day because we take the impression at three in the afternoon. So I do a very very fast design, and I send this design to the two coasts, to the west coast and to the east coast. Why? Because in the west coast I have three more hours. So they are able to do the meme and send it overnight in the same day. Yeah. And um, so the day after, the, the doctor Picos, he receives the two files, exactly the same result. He tested the two in the mouth. He just could differ, do the difference because of the pink, because the pink was created by hand in both of the cases. So the only difference between those two prostheses, one created in Miami, the other one created in San Diego, was just the pink. The occlusion, the implant adjustment, the shapes, everything was exactly the same. And this is this reliability. It's uh, mm, one of the biggest key points of the, of the system. So the doctor, uh, Michael, he said to me, Adrian, <laughs> this is amazing. And he, he, of course, he purchased the system and he's very happy now with his system for immediate loading and also for, uh, for final restorations. So those key points are probably the, the game changer. Something that you cannot realize that, okay, two steps, how I can figure out because the people at, at first they say, but how do you have two steps and how I have to put them together? First of all, doing two steps is very easy. It's much easier that uh, the learning curve of how to splint and you know you don't need a 10 years experience doctor to take the impressions um, every single doctor nurse technician administration everybody with um, two hours training can take the pic file with a pic camera and the pic transfers is really easy to to learn how to take the pic file Every nurse knows how to take an LGA and how to manage, and, uh, or, or, or the doctors, they know how to manage the internal scanner. So it's easier to, to get both. You don't have to explain them how to explain together and everything. And then you send it to the lab, and in the lab, or you have in-house a lab or in-house a, a CAD system, 
with three clicks, import, import, click, 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 go. And you enter in the wizard of the system and you design and send it to the million or the printer or whatever. So it's it's really um uh you you really increase the um, the reproducibility of what you have. All the imprint impressions will have the same quality. You will have an homogeneous an homogeneous quality while taking the impression. This is very important. It's not that oh okay, this impression was good. Let's see tomorrow. Every time will be a, a very nice impression. And this is also an uh, uh, important thing for the, the confidence of the team. Yeah, no, I know. It sounds like, um, you know, the, the system is really um, fantastic because, you know, it, it captures the implant positions precisely. It allows you to have full digital control. Um, it allows um, the use of other technologies, which are obviously making... Um, all kinds of um, massive workflow improvements in in dentistry. So there's no there's no retakes. There's no um, you know it 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 just reduces all the error steps. And I think that's what people want with these types of cases. You know they're they're large cases. They're large investments. It's a lot of time and it's a lot of money. So what we don't want is it to come down to you know a, a failed impression to um, to fail the whole system. So I think you know this system uh, you know the the future is bright. If um, if implant dentists or labs or or clinics are wanting to get a hold of your company and, and look at maybe ordering the system, is the website the best place to start? I know you guys have PickDental.com, P-I-C-D-E-N-T-A-L.com. Is is that the best place to start and just fill out the form, or um, you know, should they um, come see you at a convention, or how? What's what's the best way for people to get a hold of uh, the company? No, hundred percent. We have a uh, we have um, a website that you can have uh, clinical cases, uh, international uh, journal publications. We have more than fifteen publications in high impact in JCR articles, magazines, and journals. And um, you have also our Instagram account. We have a Facebook account, LinkedIn account. We are in the social media. We are in the website. And uh, we have two offices. We have the headquarters uh, in Madrid, in Spain. And we have an office in Miami, Florida, uh, since 2019. We came the, the last year. We came here into the U.S. in order to, to provide uh, better support to our, to our customers and uh, to do the deliveries faster, to decrease the, um, the delivery time. And of course, to put in contact those labs and those clinics, not everybody has the same info. You know, when you are working um, with uh, Thai bases and you find another brand that is working with this Thai base, and then the, the, the guy from the lab say, yeah, but those Thai bases I don't like because I use these ones because da, 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 and the doctor. So they find uh, they really contact us and say adrian what's i have a problem i don't have a library for this so my team uh creates a customized library for them and they they can purchase this is somebody they can use these other tie base they and, and we can put all together in a private implant library and this is also a, a good service that we provide um for customers so it's not only about devices it's also about helping our customers to really join the digital technology which is not peak i mean we in every course that we do we teach intraoral scanning tips we teach 3d printer manufacturing tips we teach uh, million bars uh, tips how to uh, improve your milling strategy, for example. This is something that nobody can imagine that you can do it. Ah, oh, but I can improve my milling strategies. Oh, how? So it's not about the devices. Of course, uh, Big Dental provides the biggest accuracy you can find in the industry of taking uh, in the impressions. But it's not only about the accuracy. It's also how you implement this accuracy in your workflow. Let me explain to you. Um, I find uh, some customers that they work 
with tie bases, and they just uh, cement those tie bases in a very inappropriate manner. So they purchase the pig dental system, they don't cement in the proper manner the tie bases, so the fitting was not good. And they called me, Adrian, this is not working. How is it possible? And I said, well, why is it not working? No, this is not working because look here. So we realized that they are not cementing in the right manner. So what we did is in every course, we try to advise and to train them how to cement in the proper way. So then, oh, that's great. So they find a lot of problems that they don't belong probably for the impression, but they belong from the whole process of the whole workflow. So sometimes it's not a question of, no, I took the impression perfectly. No, sometimes it's because, of course, you did it good, but your lab uh, or, or even your own, your guys, you don't, you don't cement in the right position. And we are talking about microns. We are talking that the cross accuracy of the system is six microns. Molar to molar distance is six microns accuracy. Six microns is smaller than a red globule. So it's something you cannot see with your eyes. We are talking that your eyes are able to see 100 microns, which is the, the one hair, okay? And we are talking about we are 10 times more accurate than that. And this is when you are going to purchase one device and you are expecting um, from this device, you are expecting a high accuracy, you cannot have a lack of control in, at the end of the process, for example, while you are cementing the tie base. Because how, why do you want a super high accuracy in the, in the design because of peak? But then when you are going to cement the tie base, you are destroying everything. So it's not only about uh, um, purchasing this technology, it's also how you implement this technology in your Dupla clinic and lab. And this is very, very important. Yeah. No, I like that. It's about, it's about the evolution of the whole um, digital field. And, it, and you guys are just a, 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 obviously a part in that, but it's, it's about the whole evolution. So um, I think it's great that you're you know, in for the long haul and training the customers on um, how they can best maximize all parts of their workflows and then how your system can work within that. I think that's a great advantage that um, will help out in the long run. So um, I would encourage everyone to go check you out at pickdental.com and to reach out and um, look forward to working with you guys more in the future. And Adrian, I really appreciate your time today. I know, um, you know you've got some great things that you guys are doing and look forward to working with you guys in the future and keeping up with that. So um, like I said, you know, uh, look, um, you know, I would encourage anybody to go check you guys out at Pick Dental and look forward to um, catching up with you soon at a, at a meeting. Okay, sir? Thank you very much. Thank you for your time and thank you for this opportunity to share our experience with our technology. And I hope we can help much more uh, practices uh, from now on. So thank you, Phil. Well, thank you, Adrian. I, I really appreciate the opportunity. I think, uh, you know, you, you really uh, know your stuff. And I, um, you know, I uh, will put this together and get this um, processed in the next couple weeks. And I'll let you know um, when I release it. And um, uh, I, I look forward to maybe working with you in the future. We're at the point where we're looking at this and um, would love to, you know, talk with you about that and, and, uh, and collaborate on some other ideas. I'm sure we know uh, a lot of similar people. And um, um, I'll be in touch with you and, and really appreciate your time today, sir. Okay, my pleasure. Thank you very much.